Quick show of hands. Anybody in here wearing one? Come on, there's got to be a few. All right. I hope you got your close to your goal. Um, so I got my Fitbit about a year ago. My husband came home one day and said, do you want to do this with me? And we're kind of competitive, so we really got into it. I started doing planks. It was amazing. It would be like 11.30 in our house, and we'd be running around trying to get more steps. And we might think that people know what that's about. Um, the thing is, it didn't stop there, right? So like most technology today, there's a huge social component to Fitbit, and pretty soon I was challenging my coworkers and my friends, no one could get away from me. Um, and we were using social pressure to keep each other motivated. You know, cheers and jeers, more cheers. Um, and there's actually a science to this. Now, there have been a couple of great studies done. The one I want to talk about today is a study that came out of Framingham, Massachusetts. This was a longitudinal medical study on heart health. And uh, the researchers collected lots of great data one of the data sets they collected looked at the participants' contacts. And what that let them do later was reconstruct those participants' offline networks. And some really interesting patterns began to emerge. We saw that there were trends in obesity and trends in happiness. But really, really interestingly, there were trends in behavior change. So if folks were trying to quit smoking, chances are other people within that network were trying to quit smoking too. It's amazing, right? So what Framingham teaches us is that we want to be like each other. Um, we learn about socially appropriate actions from the people who are important to us in our networks. And those form the basis for the behaviors we try to adopt. So what does this have to do with wearable tech? Well, guys, I'm going to let you in on a secret. Wearable tech happens in the offline world. You know, things like armor, that's offline. So we need to look at offline behaviors that we're going to build in the online space. And the best place to look for that info is with our social networks, online and offline. Because I don't know about you guys, but my social network is always trying to tell me what to do. A few years ago, everybody was getting married, they were having babies, and they were running marathons. And like, <laughs> that seemed like the normal thing to do. But you know what? We're also really good at lying about these things online. Um, it's a great place to be deceptive. We're awesome liars, and don't worry. It's an important part of belonging to a social group. It's okay to lie, but we get carried away online because it's easy to do it there. You know, I want you guys to think about your profile photos on Facebook for a second. When was the last time you changed those? Do you actually look like that person still? No, probably not. But we're trying to present the best of ourselves at all times. Here's the thing, though: we're not just lying online; we're lying offline. I see some folks wearing glasses, but if there are people wearing contacts here, like me. You're lying about the fitness of your vision. <laughs> Liars, all of you. But that's okay. You know what? It's okay because you can see. You're using technology to see. And if you can see, you can see a predator coming, and you can let me know there's a predator coming. And we can run away and live for another day and get some steps. It's all great. But you're going to help the group overall, so it's a good thing. So wearable tech helps us with deception. It performs a service for us. But it's also symbolic, right? It tells people about us. It tells people that we want to belong to this group. And this has always been true of wearable tech. It was true of armor. It told people like what clans they belong to. It's important information when you're going to war. So as we're looking to the future here, um, we need to be able to deploy deception in responsible ways. And something we need to be thinking about is accountability. So it's one thing to wear this device, but if you're going to wear it and be at the top of the leaderboard, then you better show some changes, right? People need to believe that you belong there. Um, that's the difference between a Fitbit and a pedometer. These steps matter to someone else. We also have to think about the symbolism, because wearing this device tells people something about you. It says that even if you're not at the top of the leaderboard, you belong to a community that values certain things. So these meetings are going to come out regardless. And finally, people are going to take these devices and reshape them and create meetings that you can't control, but you have to give them the space to do that. It happens online when new parents happen, you know, like they're posting photos of their babies and figuring out what it means to be a parent and creating that community. So the future of wearable tech for me means looking at, you know, what it means to be human and realizing that networks aren't static things. They shift and they ripple and they use deception to recenter themselves. So let's be deceptive together. Come talk to me afterwards.